two here for lesson number two. Uh, in today's lesson, we're going to be working with two-way tables, so starting to look at probabilities uh, out of a table, uh, and we'll start to look at some specific types of probabilities in today's lesson. Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do here is read through this problem about Waldo's uh, school here in the Midwest, and take your calculator out and do some adding. Right? We want to add all of our columns, and we want to add all of our rows and see what we get. So pause the video and come back and see if your totals are right. All right, so welcome back. Hopefully you have the right totals here. So take a look and see if you got the same ones as me. A couple of things to notice from the table. Uh, so there is a total of 515 people. Both the uh, column here and the row here add to that same value. That should always happen. And this is the total of the survey. All right, so that's how many people were actually surveyed uh, in this town. Now, this is an example of what we call a survey. So we're asking some of the eligible voters whether they would vote yes or no, which is why no answers in there, because some people might be undecided. This 515 does not represent every single eligible voter in the town. So we have to understand that this is just a small sample of the uh, total number of people. So we're going to use this data and answer some questions. So it says, based on the survey, do you think that the school board should recommend building a new school? There's <clears throat> some wiggle room here, whether you said yes or no. I'm going to say yes, only because there were 217 yes votes and 230 no votes. So there's definitely more yes votes than no votes. And even if all of these no answer people decide to vote no, that still wouldn't surpass the number of yeses. So we can say yes, simply because there are more yes votes in the survey. Now, this survey separated the voters by their age group. Now, I want to take a look at something. Look at this age group total. So the age group total of 66 and older, they only polled 88 people in this survey. So if you said no to this question, which you could say, you can say that the survey did not have a, a good estimation of the types of voters that are going to vote. For example, in most local elections, it's the old people that come out and vote, not the young people, right? So you have to keep that into consideration that this might be some type of a biased survey, but that's something that we'll talk about in the next unit on statistics. For this, we're just looking at the probability. So we're just looking at the data for today, okay? So let's take a look at the next question. So it says, a, an eligible voter is picked at random. If the person's 21 years old, do you think he would indicate that the town should build a new high school? So <clears throat> we have a given here. Meaning we're only talking about 21-year-old person here. So we want to find the probability that this is a yes vote given that the person fits into that 21-year-old uh, category. So out of the people in the 21-year-old category, there were um, 75 of them. And out of those 75 people, 61 said yes. So if you look, all I'm doing here is I'm looking just at this first row. There are 75 people that would have fit into that category being 21 years old. And of those 75 people, 61 said yes. So that's our answer. I don't have to reduce it. I don't have to do anything. If I want to show this probability as a decimal, remember from lesson one, we said all of our probabilities can be shown as decimals to nearest uh, three decimal places. This can be point. 813. All right, let's try another one. So it says an eligible voter is picked at random. The person is 55 years old. This is a given. We already know the age group that we're talking about. Do they think that they would indicate building the vote? So we would say the probability of yes, given being 55 years old. Well, in the survey, there were 149 people that would fit the category of being 55 years old. And of those 149 people, 
66 would have said yes. So if we reduce that to a decimal, 0.044, oh, not oh, 0.443. So just by looking at these two probabilities that we found, we already can start to make some conclusions about this vote. So it says, describe the relationship between age and the support of the new building, right? As age increases, support decreases, right? So if you look, the probability, if you were to do this for all four categories of age, you'd actually see that the... Um, the probability would actually slightly go down every time you went to the next age category for the most part. All right, let's go on to another part of this question. So in interviewing these same people, we can categorize them differently. So instead of categorizing them by age, we can put them all together so that we're not using age to, to look at whether or not they voted yes, but we can look at whether or not they're male or female, we could look at whether or not they are a certain race. Uh, we could look at whether or not they uh, live in a certain area of the town. There's a lot of different ways that we can categorize these people. So I'm going to categorize them as male versus female. And if you look, we have what we call a partially filled in two-way table. They like to put these uh, on questions because it actually asks you to understand how the two-way table actually works. So remember, all of the columns and all the rows have to add to the same values. So it's kind of like a puzzle. So take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can fill in the missing boxes. Use your calculator to add and subtract numbers and try and make sure that all of the vertical columns add to the right value and all of the horizontal rows add to the right value. All right, so welcome back. Hopefully you got the same numbers I got. So all I did was I took this total of 515, I subtracted the 274, I was able to get to 241. This column totaled to 12, so I knew it had to be 6 and 6. Uh, for this row, this row had to add to 515, so I was able to come up with the 273, which then gave me the 154, and allowed me to find those last two. It's just a puzzle. So, in this table, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected voter will vote yes, likes, supports the new high school? Notice there's no given here. There's no information that we're specifically looking at. So this is asking us to compare this to the entire survey. So out of the whole survey, there were 273 yes votes. If we divide those two numbers, we get 0 0.530. And if we write that as a percent, that would be 53.0%. So for probability, since we round our decimals to three decimal places, our percents are usually rounded to one decimal place. So we can see out of this whole survey, we have 53% of our people are going to say yes. Uh, again, that's slightly more than half, so we would say we'd probably go on with this vote, but there are ways for us to kind of look at that more deeply, but we'll do that in the next chapter. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Because if a randomly selected voter is female, this is given. So since that's given, that's the only people we're looking at. We're not looking at males at all for this survey. And we want to know whether or not she would like to build a new high school. So the probability of a yes vote, given this person is female. Well, out of this whole survey, there were 274 females. And out of those females, 154 said yes. Change that to a decimal. And then change that decimal to a percent. Just click typing it in the calculator. That's all we're doing. So what we can see here is when compared to the overall percentage, 53%, the percentage of just females is actually slightly higher. So that means females are more likely than the population to vote yes. So since we did this with females, let's do the same thing with males. So we could say, what's the probability of a yes vote given males? Now, because we already know these first two answers, 
we already know that this probability is going to be smaller than 53%, right? It's going to have to kind of balance out in some way. So out of the survey, there were 241 males, and 119 said that they would have voted yes. Change that to a decimal, and change that to a percent. So if only males voted, this vote would not pass. So the last question said, did knowing the gender of the voter affect the probability? The answer is yes, right? We have more yes votes from females. So if you were a school board and this was a real situation, you would want to find more females to come out and vote. So if you were to have this actual vote happen for the whole town, not just this small survey of 515 people, you'd be calling female voters and saying, come out and vote, because from your survey, you were getting the information that more females would vote yes. All right, let's move on. Number three. So number three is talking about these health, uh, health workers in Wisconsin, and they wanted to determine whether or not having asthma has a relationship to whether or not you live with a smoker. So they know some of the data. So they know in this high school, they complete a survey and they found that 0.193 uh, people uh, have asthma, right? So 19.3% of the population of the school have asthma. Uh, it also tells us that um, 0.421 people or 42% of people live with a smoker and 0.120 or about 12% of people live with a smoker and have asthma. So just by knowing that data, 12% of people live with a smoker and have asthma. You say that's a small percentage, so there might not be a correlation there. But once we develop the two-way table and start looking at the probabilities, you actually see that there probably is a correlation. So because we don't have actual numbers, right, we don't know how many people were actually surveyed. We don't know how many actual students have asthma versus don't have asthma, but we do know these probabilities. So what we can do is we can come up with a arbitrary number to use for the total and develop a two-way table using that arbitrary number. The number that they like to use is a thousand. The reason why is if you take your probabilities and multiply them by a thousand, it's really easy to just move the decimal place. If I was to make this total 650, I'd have to do a lot of calculating and I'd have probably parts of people that fit into these categories. So a thousand is the good number to use. This is called a hypothetical 1,000 two-way table. We're coming up with a hypothetical situation of this school having a thousand people. So using our probabilities, I can fill in three boxes. The 0.193 translates to 193 students that have asthma. The 0.421, that translates to the number of people that live with a smoker. So there's 421 people that live with a smoker. That would be the bottom of this column. And this last one says end. End means we're talking about a specific box that uh, has both of those categories true. So where would that box be located? So somebody that lives with a smoker and has asthma, we're talking about this box here. So that'd be 120 people there. So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can fill in the rest of this hypothetical two-way table. All right, so once we fill in the table, hopefully you got the same number as me here. Uh, you can look at two uh, sets of numbers, 73 versus 120 and 506 versus 301. So what you can see by looking at these two sets of numbers is when we introduce the fact that they live with a smoker, the number of asthma cases does go up. So we can see there's a correlation there, okay? Let's find some probabilities and see if our uh, idea here is correct. So it says a randomly selected student has asthma. Has asthma, that's given. <clears throat> and we wanna figure out what is the probability that the student lives with a smoker? So probability of living with a smoker, given having asthma, 
since the given is asthma, we're only looking at the people with asthma. 193 people with asthma, and 120 of them live with a smoker. Change that to a decimal, and we get 0 0.662. 62% of people. The next one asks, does not have asthma. That's my given. So what's the probability of living with a smoker given no asthma? So we're only looking at the people now that have no asthma. So there's 807 people that have no asthma and 301 of them live with a smoker. Calculate. We get about 37% of people live with a smoker, given they have no asthma. So looking at these two numbers, these conditional probabilities, we're adding a condition that we want to specifically look at. You can see that the probability is way higher of having asthma, uh, living with a smoker if you have asthma. Okay. So it says, do you think that <clears throat> whether or not the students have asthma is related to whether they live with a smoker? The answer is yes, because the probability of asthma is higher in that is in smoking homes. And this would be a good time to pause the video and try your homework. So go on to the homework questions, uh, see if you can find those probabilities. Make sure you read everything carefully uh, and come back to the video when you've tried them. All right, hopefully you tried these questions and you're coming back to the video here. So here it wants us to create a hypothetical 1000 table. So, whoops, I already know uh, one of the numbers. This number here has to be a thousand. So this talks about a factory, and the factory has um, <clears throat> uh, two different factories, and these uh, factories produce either highly rated cars or not so highly rated cars. So the first piece of info says that factory A assembles 60% of the cars. So the total for factory A is 600, because that would be what 60% of 1,000 is. It also says that 70% of the cars made by this company, which is both of these factories combined, wind up being highly rated, 70% of 1,000 is 700. It then says that 10% of these cars are made both in factory B and were not highly rated. So the word N tells us we're looking at a specific box here, factory B, not highly rated, there were 100 cars made there. <clears throat> we then can fill in our table using subtraction, making sure that all the columns add up correctly and all the rows add up correctly. So there's your table. So it says a luxury car is selected at random. So that could be any of the cars in this survey. And it says, what's the probability that it's highly rated? I'm just going to use HR for highly rated, just so you know. So out of the total of 1,000 cars, 700 of them were highly rated. It then says a randomly selected car was assembled in factory B. So since it was coming from factory B, that's my given. I'm only looking at the factory B cars. What's the probability that's highly rated? So probability of highly rated, given the fact that it was assembled in factory B. There are 400 cars in factory B, and of those, 300 are highly rated. So about 75% of the cars made in factory B are going to be highly rated. <clears throat> now, this next question looks different, and it is different, but it feels the same. You're talking about the same two pieces. So the first question says that it's given that it was made in factory B. Now I'm giving you that it's highly rated. So what's the probability that it's made in factory B given 
this car is highly rated. Well, there are 700 highly rated cars in this survey, and 300 of them were made in Factory B. So what we can see here is the probability is different. These are completely different probabilities because of what was given. This is going to help us eventually in this chapter identify whether or not the cars made in Factory B are independent of whether or not they're highly rated or not essentially telling us, is Factory B really producing more highly rated cars than Factory A? For right now, I just need you to know how to find the probabilities. So again, make sure that you understand that these two questions are different. They're asking it in a different way. All right, next question. Another school board question. So it gives us this Waldo school board. Uh, it wants us to evaluate the town's library. So we're evaluating something, we're comparing things as uh, good, average, poor, do not use the library, and whether or not they're male or female. You'll notice a lot of these surveys wind up being male or female, just an easy way of identifying. So if we go through and fill in our table using subtraction, we can find these couple numbers pretty quickly. Then fill in what you can. The first row has almost everything but one box, so if we do some subtraction, we can find that that's 42. This column, if we do some addition, we can see that that's 97. And then we have two more rows that are missing something, so I can find the 73 and the 137. Again, all we're doing there, it's like a puzzle. You're just adding and subtracting. So it says, what is the probability the person selected at random is male? So there are a total of 515 people. We're talking about the whole survey here. And we want to find the probability that that person is male. So there are 241 males out of 515 people in the survey. Divide those two numbers, and we get our decimal. Next, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected person completes the survey rated the service as good. So again, we're talking about everybody here. So randomly selecting somebody from the survey. So the probability that this random person likes the service and is good. So out of 515 people, there are 184 good votes. So about 36, 35.7% people think it's good. And then we have another probability. What's the probability that a randomly selected person ha likes the service is good and is male? Now, this is not a given. This is saying and. So we're randomly selecting somebody, and we want to know if both of these things are true. So the probability of good service and male. So here we're talking about the whole survey. There's no condition here. So we're looking at the box of good and male this box compared to the whole survey. So there are 91 people that satisfy both of those conditions. We're about 17.7%. Notice that is different than the last question. It's talking about the same two things, good service and probability being male, but the way that this next one is worded tells us that this is a given, right? It tells us that we're randomly selecting a person who says that the service is good, meaning we're only randomly selecting from the column for good, where the previous question was randomly selecting a person from the survey, so we're talking about the whole survey. So here we have a randomly selected person is male given that they think that the service at the library is good. So we're only talking about the 184 people that rated the service good, and of those 184 people, 91 are male. This probability winds up becoming 495. Being able to determine these differences between the wording is going to be extremely useful to us as we move on in this chapter and we start looking at independence and whether or not these probabilities affect each other in any way.
For right now, again, all I care about is that you're able to fill in the two-way tables, be able to decipher what the two-way table is asking us to look for, and being able to come up with these probabilities on your own. If you have any questions, please reach out to me via email, and I hope to see you soon.